students how are you today uh, today I'm going to explain chapter 3 uh, an important chapter in business studies uh, it will uh, help you to know a lot of important concepts that uh, examiners usually ask about uh, this is the syllabus that we have uh, this chapter will cover four main points in the syllabus uh, the first one which is enterprise and entrepreneurship uh, we'll talk about entrepreneurs, their characteristics, and uh, why they should have a business plan. And we'll talk then about the ways of measuring the business size. And also we'll talk about the growth of businesses and why businesses remain small. And we we'll talk about the different ways in which businesses can use to grow. And of course, the problems that they might face. And at the end, we'll talk about the reasons of business failure. Uh, if it comes to the, the exam now, uh, when it comes to the exam, uh, the main points that uh, I saw in past papers are uh, the, the meaning. They ask you about the meaning of entrepreneurs and their characteristics. Uh, this is probably will be part B and C in paper one. Uh, they, they have these questions and uh, business size is important. Uh, and what's uh, important business size is the limitations. They ask about the limitations. Uh, we'll talk about it uh, in a while. Uh, okay, so just uh, this for now. Let's start. Uh, if you look at these people, probably most of you, they, they know these guys. Um, this uh, guy here is uh, called Mark Zuckerberg. He's the owner of uh, Facebook. Now, of course, you know Facebook. Uh, Richard Branson is the owner of Virgin. Virgin Group, it's a group of companies. It includes airlines, uh, mobile phones, train services, and a lot more. The third one is called Steve Wozniak. He's uh, an American guy who owns an uh, Apple computers. He's uh, a billionaire. And the fourth one is me. Uh, yes, I'm not an entrepreneur, but I'm planning to be one of them. I hope one day I'll be uh, one of uh, these guys. So uh, I don't know if uh, I'll be one. Uh, hopefully I will. So if you look at uh, these guys, you see that these people had a lot of ideas and they started their own business with an idea and they took a lot of financial risks to start and manage their business. So if you are an entrepreneur, you are simply a person or an individual who has an idea and you take a financial risk to start up your own business. So uh, of course you should take risk to start up your own business and uh, implement uh, the idea you have. Uh, now of course not everyone uh, will be an entrepreneur, so these people have uh, similar characteristics uh, so first they are initiative they are able to develop a good plan and achieve their objectives uh, they are risk takers of course they are prepared to take risk and they always see the failure as a very good experience and a positive one and the last one uh, i mentioned here is self-confidence which is uh, important to to have it's it's having a strong belief in your own ability as an entrepreneur and ideas of course uh, without self-confident probably uh, entrepreneurs cannot talk to other peoples because um, they need to convince banks for example uh, lenders or customers to buy their goods so they should be self-confident uh, we have many uh, many more characteristics we have uh, characteristics like uh, hard working optimistic, creative, risk takers, as I said, effective communicators, uh, independent, for example. But I just listed these. Uh, it's not. Uh, uh, it's enough to, to, to know three of them uh, because in the exam they will ask you about two or three of them, not all of them. Okay. 
Uh, so here, uh, the benefits of being an entrepreneur, uh, of course, if you are an entrepreneur, that means you are independent and you will be able to put your own ideas into practice. Your business might be famous and successful and you will make a lot of money instead of being an employee. However, uh, a lot of disadvantages are there. The first one is risk. A lot of new entrepreneurs fail, fail because of several reasons. We'll talk about it at the end of this chapter. One of the main reasons is poor planning, which is the, the, the main thing in, in being an entrepreneur. A good plan will make your business successful. Uh, a lot of people, they lack uh, money. Uh, a lot of them, they, they, they have uh, no knowledge or bad experience when they start their own business. So probably they will uh, fail. Uh, now, when I talk about business plan or entrepreneurs, uh, these are totally related. So if you are an entrepreneur, you should have a business plan. A business plan is just a document. It's a written one that outlines all the purposes and aims of the business. So uh, it's mainly used to persuade, to convince lenders like banks and of course investors who are willing to invest in your company the business plan will convince them. So if you are an entrepreneur and have a great idea, you should have your own plan and make a plan. If you don't have a plan, then you should create your business plan. And if it makes sense, then yes, you are on the way to be successful. However, if you don't have a plan or it doesn't make sense, you should go back, draw your business plan, and uh, continue or, or uh, do your business. So business plan is very important because it helps entrepreneurs in many ways. Uh, as I said, uh, business plan is the main thing for entrepreneurs. Uh, so uh, the banks probably will ask entrepreneurs for a business plan before giving uh, a loan or giving a help to finance the new business. This is the main target of business plan. The second one will be uh, in the business plan, what are the products that I'm going to sell? What are the services uh, should I provide and to which customers or to which consumers because I should know them. Uh, the third one will be what will be uh, the main cost and you know, of course you'll have cost, but you should know also, uh, is it enough for you to sell your products at a certain price and pay? Uh, the cost back sometimes uh, you fail if you don't plan this uh, where would, will the firm will be located of course this is very important location is a, an important thing for businesses and we will study this in details in chapter 18 uh, also there is an important thing which is uh, the machinery you know uh, the, the money will be spent to buy machines and to hire people so I should know the number of people, their skills, uh, the machines I need, uh, and uh, many more. In business plan, usually um, they are 60, 70 pages. So uh, they include all the details. Uh, everything you can imagine about the business is there. So the main target, as I said, is to make a business plan to get a loan. So uh, if your business plan is poor, probably you will get no... Uh, bank loan. It's, it's very simple. If you visit any bank and ask the bank manager for a loan and the bank manager believes that your business plan is not well completed, for example, you don't have a forecasted cash flow or you don't have a forecasted uh, sales or you don't know what will happen after the, after first, the first year of, of operation. So probably the bank will uh, not give you a, a bank loan. So I cannot finance my business without money uh, because most of the business owners, they uh, uh, go to banks to get their loans, uh, of course, as, as a beginning. Uh, this is for uh, business plan. Uh, now, uh, when I say new businesses, I mean, we call them in business, business startups. These are the newly formed businesses. All businesses, they started small. Uh, I remember I read about uh, the owner of uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and I read his story. Uh, he started a very small place, 
in uh, the States, it was very small. Uh, this target was to sell coffee and donuts for uh, people. But uh, nowadays, his business is uh, very well known. And of course, it's all over the world. So usually when you, you start your own business, the governments uh, will encourage these businesses to start uh, for several reasons. And uh, the government know that these uh, businesses will uh, benefit the economy and they will have a lot of advantages. Uh, job creation is the first one. Of course, they will create jobs and uh, they will have new ideas. So new ideas will bring in new goods and new services, and this is uh, good because uh, the choices for consumers will be more. Uh, the competition will be more. So if more businesses are competing, that means the prices will be reducing, and businesses will do their best to give the best quality for uh, customers. And of course, as I said, businesses uh, will become uh, large, and in the future, uh, they will benefit uh, the country. So when Apple started or when Google started or when uh, Virgin started, they were small and, uh, you know, now when, when they become uh, big, they, they are uh, main uh, businesses, let's say, in the economy. So in the States now, these businesses, uh, of course, they benefit the economy and uh, they hire thousands of people. So that's why the government will support these businesses. Now, how the government will support them, uh, it depends on the country, actually, but usually the governments will give these businesses low interest loans. So uh, usually they give you a loan, for example, for three, four years, and you return back the money with uh, low interest. Uh, sometimes uh, governments will uh, pass their own regulations to lower tax rates on your profits, especially if you are a new business and uh, this will happen uh, for two or three years from the beginning so to help you use your profit to grow and uh, in the states and canada as i know they provide free trainings for workers so they have their own centers for information and advice and the training so they train you how to manage the business how to manage workers and uh, many more things remember the target is to help you grow and help your business to succeed, especially at uh, the beginning. Uh, now, uh, measuring business size, which is uh, the second topic in the syllabus. Uh, measuring business size is really important. Uh, when I say uh, business size, uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, the size of the business, which can be measured by several things. So sometimes firms can be owned and run by single individuals. Uh, some businesses, they employ hundred, uh, hundreds of people or hundreds of thousands of workers uh, all over the world. So uh, it's important to, to know how should I measure the size of the business. So uh, first thing, uh, who is interested in comparing business size? So who will look at the business size? Uh, these people here are uh, those who are interested. So the first one, uh, or the first party, let's say, are investors. Uh, these people, they uh, want to know the business size before deciding which business to put their savings into. And uh, governments also are interested to know the business size because, you know, different tax rates will be there for small and large businesses. Uh, competitors uh, also they want to know the business size because they want to compare their importance to other firms. Uh, workers, for example, also they want to know the business size because uh, they want to uh, know, for example, uh, for whom should they work. Uh, and uh, banks, of course, they want to know the business size because they want to see how important a loan is uh, to the business and they want to uh, see the business size to decide if they give a loan to the business or not. So probably the, the, the business size is important for these people and uh, measuring it can be done by several ways. Uh, so when I say measuring the business size, the first uh, thing uh, or the first uh, factor, let's say, is uh, the capital employed. 
Capital employed is uh, the total value of capital that, that, that is used in the business. So uh, when I say capital employed, uh, uh, I, I can look at the capital employed of the business and I can see if the capital employed of the business is high or low so I can tell if the business uh, size is big or small. But always remember the limitation. Because in many industries, when I say uh, uh, capital employed, for example, in a business like cars, cars industry, their capital is very high. However, in other um, businesses, the capital might be small because the nature of the business. But uh, I, maybe the business, other businesses, let's say computer design or computer software design business might have a bigger size than the car uh, manufacturing business, let's say. So capital employed has uh, this limitation. Uh, the other factor we consider is the value of output. Uh, the value of output is also a common way of comparing the business size, uh, especially in manufacturing industries. Uh, value of output, I mean the value of sales. Uh, also, we have a limitation here because it also depends on uh, the industry because some businesses, uh, they, if, if I'm talking about cars, uh, the value of sales will be uh, higher than any other business, which is, uh, for example, uh, supermarket, let's say, or hypermarkets. Uh, but again, uh, I cannot rely only on the value of sales to say this business is uh, bigger than other business. Uh, the third one, which is uh, important to know, uh, which is number of employees. Number of employees, uh, the, the people employed in the business. Uh, this is uh, an important factor uh, to consider when I measure the business size, but the limitation is really important. And I saw questions about this in past papers. Uh, remember some businesses, uh, they use machines, they use equipments, and they don't use workers. So for example, the MW factory, they use robots and they hire um, 10 or 15 workers only. So we call them capital intensive businesses. These businesses, they rely on uh, machines and equipments. However, other businesses are labor intensive businesses because they uh, hire a lot of people. Uh, they rely on workers. Uh, they don't rely on automation and computer controlled equipments. So now if I want to see the two businesses, I cannot say this business is bigger because they have more employees. What if this business is, is very big, but they rely on machines and equipments? So it's, it's misleading to, to say uh, or to measure the size relying on number of employees. The last one, which is uh, market share. Uh, when I say market share, it's the total value of uh, the business sales out of the total sales on the market. Uh, so, for example, when I uh, say uh, market share, uh, let's say I have two businesses. Uh, a business might have 10% um, of the market, and uh, this market is, uh, let's say, uh, selling uh, grocery uh, or selling sweets, for example. Uh, and I have another business, uh, which is uh, cars and uh, the business owns 3% uh, of the market. So now you'll say at the beginning, okay, 10% is more than three. Uh, and this is probably wrong because I have to look at the total market value first. So if I see, for example, uh, the, the total value of selling sweets or the market value of selling sweets is $500,000, let's say. So 10% of $500,000. And B, for example, the other business, which is uh, cars, they have like 6% of $8,500,000. So now, uh, of course, B is bigger because the market value is bigger. So how to know it? Uh, the, the market share has a rule. Uh, you'll study this later, but just know this. Uh, usually, if you want to know your market share, you have to divide your uh, sales over the total sales of the market. So let's say my sales are 20,000 and the value of sales in the market 100,000. So 20,000 over 100,000 will give me the market share. Okay, so uh, all these 
should be uh, used to measure the size of the business. Uh, I cannot rely on the capital employed or value of output or number of employees or market share alone. I should consider all these to find out the uh, size of the business. And remember this point because students usually answer uh, in the exam and they say measuring the business size will be profit and this is totally wrong, totally wrong because uh, uh, small businesses sometimes make profits more than businesses bigger uh, than them. So it's, it's not uh, a factor to consider when I measure the size of the business. You can say profit is uh, measuring the business success. This is true, but measuring the business size, no, it's not an acceptable measure of uh, business size. Remember this because this is really important. Don't ever say profit is a way of measuring the business size. Uh, okay, so this is for measuring the business size and uh, this is just a summary. So as I said, useful for investors, governments, banks, workers and competitors and we have a lot of methods to measure the business size and now we know the limitations of measuring the business size. Okay, uh, so now we covered two topics. Uh, uh, we have a, a simple uh, questions they also ask about in the exam. Uh, reasons why businesses usually expand their businesses. Uh, it's clear, of course, businesses, they want to increase their market share and the profits, and they want to make more control over the market. But we have to study how they do this, how the business grow. They, businesses usually grow in different ways. So uh, the first way, which we call internal growth, Internal growth, it's uh, when business expands uh, its own operations, its existing operations. Uh, usually they do this by developing new products, uh, by finding new markets, for example, or they try to increase the number of goods they produce. So as you can see here, the business is relying on its own operations. So let's say a restaurant owner uh, could open other restaurants in other towns, uh, use the profits to buy new machines, uh, expand his products, and so on. All these are internal growth. Uh, however, uh, internal growth, of course, it's, it's a slow uh, because it takes time to expand using your own profits. That's why some businesses, they uh, decide to go to the external growth. When I say external growth, it's uh, when the business takes over or merges with another business. And this is what we call uh, in business integration. Integration when a firm is integrated into another one. Uh, external growth is uh, or can be done by merging with another business. So uh, A plus B will be AB, for example or taking over another business when you buy more than 50% of another business, or you buy out. Buying out is totally purchasing other businesses. So A will buy B, and now A owns uh, the company. Uh, so uh, in this chapter, they talk about the different ways of integration. It's very important to understand the uh, ways of uh, integration and uh, you understand uh, the, the benefits of each one. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the first type of merger. Uh, we call it horizontal integration. Remember, integration means emerging. So when I say horizontal integration, uh, it's, it's simple uh, to understand. Uh, why? Because when I say uh, integration, I mean merging a business with another business. Okay, so as you know, businesses, some businesses, they are on the same level of production and industry. Let's say a bakery merged with another bakery. So the bakery is on the same level and the same stage of production with another bakery. So when they merge, we call this horizontal. So it's a bakery and this is a bakery. They are on the same stage and uh, these businesses are similar. So when they merge, we call it a horizontal integration. So it's uh, simply when the firm 
buys another firm in the same industry and the same stage of production. Of course, the benefits will be that the number of competitors will reduce and the business will have a large market share. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of businesses, they do this. Uh, they decide to merge together to have uh, a market share bigger than uh, the competitors. Uh, this is for uh, horizontal integration. This is a simple example here. We have a lot of examples of horizontal integration. Uh, any two businesses in the same level of production, they can merge together. Uh, for example, tractor manufacturer with another tractor manufacturer. When they merge, this is horizontal integration. Okay, uh, then in the vertical integration, when I say vertical integration, it's uh, uh, when two businesses uh, merge together, but these businesses are on uh, different stages. So when I say uh, vertical, uh, of course, businesses are, are not on the same line. I mean, they are on different stages. So uh, let's take an example uh, in horizontal on, on vertical integration. Uh, let's say a potato factory uh, or a potato farm and um, a chips factory, they decided to merge. So the potato farm is uh, on the primary sector level, you know, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the farm on the primary sector and the factory is on the secondary sector. They are on the same industry, yes, they are. They are on the same stages, no they are totally in different stages. So when, when a, a business like a potato factory decides to merge with a business like a, a farm, we call this vertical integration. In vertical integration, I have two uh, types. The first one is called forward integration. Forward integration is simple. I'll, I'll explain it in this way. So this is a potato farm, okay, this is the farm, and uh, this is the factory here, okay? So when this farm uh, decides to merge with this factory, we call it a forward integration. Why forward? Because uh, the farm is in the primary and the factory is the secondary. So a farm is deciding to merge with the uh, factory. So this is a forward integration. Or uh, maybe a factory uh, will decide to merge with a seller of uh, chips so also this is forward integration forward integration is uh, when a business uh, takes over another business that comes after in the change of a chain of production uh, don't memorize the benefits just understand them because they are totally clear so imagine you are an owner of the farm and you decided to merge with a factory so of course you will uh, uh, you, you'll make sure that your products will go uh, immediately to the factory. The factory will buy them. And, uh, of course, the factory will, will be able to produce the goods and sell them. And, of course, uh, we can say the retailer could be prevented from selling competitors' products. So this factory will not produce other products, will not take potato from other farms. You'll take only from your farm. So uh, this is the main benefit in forward vertical integration. Uh, the other one in vertical integration, which is the backward vertical integration. Uh, backward vertical integration, it's uh, when a business takes over another business that comes before it in the chain of production. So when the factory now decide to merge with the farm, I say this is a backward vertical integration or when a seller of furniture decides to merge with the manufacturer of furniture, uh, we say this is backward, also vertical integration. So also it's simple to understand. If you are a seller and you merge with a factory uh, of furniture, you are a seller of furniture, decide to merge with a, a factory of furniture, of course you will uh, have uh, a short supply of important components, uh, you'll, you'll know that uh, there is a, a supplier who always supply you with uh, the goods that you need. And of course, you can have a best, uh, the best control over the components and supplies from your manufacturer. 
Okay, just understand them and uh, don't memorize the benefits, just understand them because they don't ask uh, uh, directly about the benefits of integrations. Uh, they just want you to know that external growth is totally different from the internal one. Okay, the last one, which is an in integration, we call it conglomerate integration. Uh, this is very simple. It's where two businesses, totally different stages, totally different industries, they decide to merge. So if I am an owner of, uh, let's say, a potato farm, I have a business, and I decided to merge with the business which sells, uh, let's say, clothes. We are totally different, but we decided to pool our money together and merge. And uh, this usually happens a lot in, in business. Businesses usually, they decide to integrate and uh, maybe they are completely different in the market. Uh, so like this example here, Wackel, for example, the crisps with uh, Next, which is a clothes store. So here, um, the business will have more diversified activities. You know, I have a lot of uh, activities uh, that I can put my money in and uh, I'm spreading the risk uh, now. Instead of taking the risk alone, other people are taking the risk with me. So, in integration, I have two types, remember, in growth, I have two types, internal and external. So, internal is uh, when you use your own profits to expand, it's a slow and it takes time however when i decide to merge uh, externally i will merge with other businesses so usually it's uh, faster than uh, relying on my own profits to expand and uh, produce more products and expand to new markets uh, now the the last point on this topic the problems that are linked to the business growth uh, remember, we have a lot of problems and uh, we have a lot of possible ways to overcome the problems. Uh, also, they are, they are easy to understand. So when I say, for example, uh, large business, uh, because of expansion, the business will be large. Of course, uh, it will be difficult to control. Uh, so usually the solution is to have small units and try to uh, di uh, divide your business into small units. Uh, sometimes uh, large business they have poor communication and this happens a lot and this is a main reason of failure in business uh, that's why uh, nowadays businesses use uh, IT solutions and telecommunications uh, to avoid the poor communication between them uh, let's say we have also expansion costs uh, we have uh, sometimes different management styles so if two businesses sometimes merge with each other Managers are different, their management styles are different, you know, there will be a clash between them. So you should, as a solution, you should have uh, a very good communication with your workforce and you, you have to make everyone understand the reason of this change. Uh, so you'll face a lot of problems in case of uh, expansion, but uh, you have a lot of uh, ways to overcome the problem. Okay, uh, last point uh, here, the, the reasons of business failure, and uh, sorry, why the businesses remain small and the other reasons of business failure. Uh, these are uh, two small topics at the end of the syllabus. So uh, the reasons of uh, businesses remaining small uh, are many. The first one is owner's choice. Some uh, business owners, they want to, uh, uh, be small they don't like to take risk and they don't like their business to be big so they decide they prefer their firm to be small or maybe the market size is already small let's say if you if you are a hairdresser uh, your market size is already small you cannot expand uh, you cannot be in, in the same place at the same and uh, in more than one place at the same time so your market size is, is like this so you it's simple you cannot expand uh, maybe the finance which is a main thing uh, if your finance is uh, uh, is not enough to expand probably you will not be able to expand and you will remain small and uh, the fourth one which is market domination some businesses they dominate the market they don't allow you to expand in the market or I mean some businesses they make it difficult for you to compete you cannot compete with uh, with big businesses already in the market so 
uh, that's why you decide to remain small because you cannot expand and become bigger. Uh, this is it for this question. And, and th this question is, is, uh, is not the main thing in the syllabus. Uh, and there's no direct questions related to it. But you should know, you should know why businesses decide to be small. Always concentrate on this in the exam. Uh, this is an easy uh, factor to, to, to remember. Lack of finance is what makes my business remain small, for example. Okay, the last point, which is business failure. Uh, a lot of details are in the book, but uh, when they ask you why some businesses fail, of course, not all businesses are successful. Uh, remember, the rate of failure for newly formed businesses is very high. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's over 50% in some countries. When I say newly formed businesses, I mean businesses operating and their first three, four years uh, are uh, the, the hardest, let's say. So even old established businesses or firms can close down because they make losses or they run out of cash. So a lot of reasons why businesses fail. The main one, of course, poor planning. And as I said at the beginning, the business plan is really important and the importance of objectives also uh, is, is clear. Uh, location decisions, poor location decisions also is the main reason. Uh, competition, a lack of finance, of course. Uh, poor management, poor management is, is really important. This is what makes your business fail. And poor cash management is even more important. Cash management is how to deal with your money. Uh, maybe the business m might have millions, but if they don't have a good plan how to use the cash, uh, of course, uh, they, they will fail. And uh, sometimes some businesses, they fail because of economic influences. When I say economic influences, I'm talking about disasters, uh, government new rules, and uh, many more. So uh, we, these are the economic influences. We call them the external influences. So uh, the business uh, probably will fail for this reason. Okay, so this chapter was long, I know, but uh, it's, it's really important to understand it. I hope I, I covered all the topics uh, in the syllabus and you, now you understand uh, all the topics. Uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll solve past papers on these uh, chapters that I already covered, one, two, and three. Uh, I'll, I'll try to solve past papers with you and tell you how to start solving paper one and uh, paper two. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, you can always ask and uh, comment on this video. Uh, thank you and see you in chapter four.